Hi everybody, RMEP here for Exploraminate.net, and welcome to our continuation of Stellaris with the new expansion Utopia. Now if you look in the upper right hand side of your screen, you'll see that we've fast forwarded into the year 2393. So I've played forward a little bit just to expedite everything uh, after the, um, the, I would say what, a white truce, an uneasy truce with an awakened empire who wouldn't be able to beat us down. We were able to retake much of my uh, alliances, my my one alliance member's part, uh, land back. So we've got a white truce. We're currently over and above that, and he hasn't been acting up. We were also able to access the Shroud, a new unique area that you can access if you have the new expansion Utopia with the Psionesis abilities. I decided to pick up at this point just because we've gotten a message from the Shroud so that a new, press, uh, new presence in the Shroud. A change has come over the living in our empire. It started with a faint ripple from the Shroud. Now, it is as if they are vibrating on a different level. We all feel it. They are on the verge of developing latent psionic abilities similar to our own maybe it's from the living such close proximity to us maybe the shroud has simply chosen them the conclave of telepaths our chief uh, psionic experts warn us that this might be the only chance to intervene we could nip that in the bud or help them awaken they will uh, they won't get far without our guidance Okay, so I guess if I was to kind of, you know, read between the lines of this somehow cryptic message, I would guess that all of our pops... Oh yeah, here we are. The little window says, all of our pops will gain the trait of latent psionic. So real question is, the Army P Republic started off this venture, our humble beginnings in the be uh, and as we went out to the stars, was one of peace. And although we've had to execute war in that tri in that uh, quest for peace, fundamentally we've always wanted to make sure that we treated people with equals, as equals. Now if we just open up my species window here, just move this window, you can see here that I have several races that we've either conquered completely, like the Velmanax who decided to strike us when they thought we were weakened, Perhaps the, where are they, Cy Gagan, who thought that they were better than us. But we have given them, you can see on the right hand side, complete full citizenship. We have taken nothing away from them even though they have somehow hurt us in the past. We've made alliances, friendships. For the most part, if we look at our diplomatic, uh, diplomatic window, you can see here as I pull out, most of the known galaxy either gets along with us or at least tolerates us. Only the Order of Zhuk Than is the one who feels a little bit uh, threatened by the Army P and the P and the, and the P way of life. So I think that we should, just for role playing, unlock the potential of all of our citizens and the Army Republic. Let's hope by clicking this left mouse button that things don't turn terribly awry for us. Okay. So far, so good. Now, that being said, let's take a look at one of my planets that have a lot of different species on it. Hmm does look like nearly everybody's gotten some type of latent ability which is awesome you can see here just in case you're you know picking up for the very first time you can see that I'm gonna get a, a uh, engineering physics society energy credit output increase as well as everybody being a little bit more happy which is hey in my books that's just great Okay, so everybody in our Republic now has some type of latent ability, which is perfect. Now, I kind of opened up because I wanted to, you know, to show everybody uh, who's been following the Army P Republic's, you know, um, 
quest into the galaxy and how we've prepared for it. But 2393 is a good year. Okay, what do we got here? I guess it's Xenozoo. We haven't researched that. That's ridiculously easy. You can see here it's only going to take five months. We're producing huge amounts of, um, of research right now. Uh, you'll notice that I, I haven't even filled up my my um, planet cap right now just because I am terraforming a couple planets that should be done within the next year. And uh, I've just kind of been playing more of a tall versus a wide, even though my empire, I believe, is probably, if not the largest, close to it. I mean, Grove Flip Interstellar Empire is part of our alliance, the Auspicious, I believe it's called the Auspicious Alliance, isn't it? Yes? Yeah, the Auspicious Alliance, so that's what we're a part of. But the reason I chose this year in particular is because if we're going to get some type of endgame crisis or the war um, in heaven triggers, it's going to be relatively quickly. What I haven't gotten is anything when it comes to unlocking those mega structures because you need to, there's a certain research tech that you need to do. It's something, let's actually check and figure out what the exact name is. Open up side perks. We need um, deep space installations. And then to get the galactic wonders, we need mega engineering. So it's two pieces of technology. It doesn't matter anyway. We can't really unlock it right now as, as we speak. But that being said, um, we do need those for research. So I have been focusing, you can see, a little bit heavier on my engineering just so that hopefully um, once I start, you know, um, researching these up to a pretty decent pace, we can actually unlock it very quickly once... Um, we have filled up our unity bar and unlocked it completely. Okay, so in the meantime, the Lazvatva Cooperative wants some Tetlar crystals for some energy credits. Well, well, how many Tetlar crystals do I have? I have 11. Hmm. Yeah, seems like a fair trade to me. Why not? So in the meantime, I can kind of fill you in on what ha I, I've been focusing on. You can see here that my fleet has grown to monstrous proportions. I've got a fleet size of 142,000. Um, that was probably because I didn't want to have to fight the auspicious, uh, or sorry, the Awakened Empire again. You can see here, I'm just, um, the Zeltac Compact is uh, offering me a trade agreement. I'm uh, paying him off so that he'll agree to that. And there's no problems at all there. Mm, I could do the jump drive for research, and that would hasten the admin. But I'm actually quite—I uh, actually want the um, the swarm, the Prithorian swarm, to show up instead. There, I find them a, a, a probably more interesting um, battle to fight. I think they're a lot easier, and, to, and quite frankly. And not only that, but I've just seen so much of the uh, button. If you've actually played Stellaris from um, vanilla, or perhaps that you've played um, just recently, maybe you picked up Stellaris when you uh, when Utopia decided to launch, you'll notice that you're going to get the unbidden quite a bit. And the reason is, is this the way that the entire the entire system is designed is a little skewed, especially if you play on anything larger on a larger map. You're going to notice that you're going to get uh, the unbidden quite frequently. Now, as this stands, I'm playing this at I think uh, I think I'm recording this right now on April 25th, and patch 1.6 Adams hasn't come out. And apparently, what they're going to be doing is key of creation. Why not? Is um, adjusting that to the point where it's not going to be nearly as one-sided when it comes to some of the, these endgame crises, which, you know, we all want to see because uh, I've done, I've had the privilege of Iron Manning all three of these, and um, I mean, it's a beast. It's definitely a beast. When you get to, a chance to try all three, and a lot of times, even kind of curtailing how you, and, and moving away from 
some of the things that may trigger the Unbidden, you'll be able to get the other two Crisis. I've actually Iron Maned all three, as I was kind of just mentioning before I trailed off for a second there. And the other two are actually very, very interesting. I actually like the AI Rebellion, although it doesn't quite make any sense anymore, especially if you decide to um, choose the Ascension perk to becoming fully robotic. They're probably going to have to rework that. Uh, three that days. Okay, so what I'm going to be able to do is, if you remember from my last episode, we were kind of accessing the shroud, and I thought that we were going to get like a permanent 20% um, damage buff to our fleet. It actually turns out that that's on a timer. I believe it's 1,500 days, so you could, you know, I could be wrong on that. About five years, give or take. And um, so when you access the shroud, and I'll just do that right now, you're going to be able to do so every 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 so often i think it's every 1500 days and every time i've accessed so far it's actually changed a little bit and everyone has a little bit of a probability of success just for a future uh, let's just take a look at this one now a small flickering star materializes inside of the shroud it flies past at incredible speeds and for a second reveals itself to as an alien ship of unknown configuration, then it vanishes in the cloud of psionic energy as quickly as it appeared. Can it be? Is it possible to physically enter the shroud and then emerge somewhere else in normal space? Hmm. I think we're going to exit the shroud. I don't know if I really want to go that deep into it. I know that the two options we've gotten in si since the beginning happen to be quite benevolent. We've already got... Ooh, look at this. Uh, yeah, the first two times we access the Shroud, it ended up giving us, like I said, a bonus to our attack, a bonus to our shields. It seems like there's a lot of interesting options there, but it, uh, choosing them at the opportune times is, of course, important. Because every time I've gone back to the Shroud, uh, it hasn't been um, a reoccurring option. Which brings us here, the Awakening. Under the guidance of the Conclave of Telepaths, you have developed a deeper connection to the Shroud than you ever thought that you would have ever imagined. If it's as if all these powers were meant were were meant for all of them all or sorry it's as if these powers were meant for them all along now they claim to be ready to unlock the full psionic potential the conclave however is divided some are worried that the change is coming too fast and their minds would be unstable others that their newfound powers could go over their heads but if we don't strike now, we may never get another chance. Ooh, wow. All pops gain the trait of psionic? Yep, of course. If we've given them latent, we might as well give them full psionic. Uh-oh. An unexpected awakening. Since the psionic awakening of the blank, I'm guessing that's a particular race, our informants report that some individuals belonging to the same species have also begun to show signs of latent psionic abilities. It is as if their common ancestry links them to the Shroud, regardless of their physical distance between them. Unlike the distant relatives in our own nation, however, there are few and far between, and they are unlikely to reach full awakening. Okay, what does that mean for our species? Because we got our empire species. These are... Valmaxians aren't actually... I mean, they are a part of my empire, and they didn't get anything here. Same with the... Zevani. Ooh, look at this. Meta Saigon Superior. Plantoids. So they're good. Hmm. It's definitely not everybody in my empire, but just some. Kind of curious. The Meta Cyan Superior. Jeez, I don't even like the idea of calling the Cyan Superior, because this goes of how aggressive they used to be. But in the meantime, we are in good shape. Ooh, what's this here? Looks like... My ally wants to go to war, but before we do that, let's take a look at what I have called, or it looks like I just terraformed, so I'm going to send my colony ship in. 
This looks like a good spot. The reason this looks like a good spot is because my reassembled colony ship will generate power, so that's what I'm aiming for here. I will get a bonus to my minerals by going down to left. I will get an even better bonus. So uh, now that colony is complete. Oh, looks like we're... Oh, great. <sighs> Where's Twisted Sister when you need him? It looks like... Got some more war demands from the Zack... Zack Plot Arbitrators. Great. Who did you declare war on? The Grohl Flip Interstellar Empire. So I can't really set any demands, unfortunately, because only the Defender can. So we are now officially at war. So let's see what this war machine can do. Because last time we were in pretty good shape. And I've built up an army of Sionesis. Oh, where does my where's my mate? There it is. Let's do these two. Sionesis and Xenophobes. Or Xeno um what are they called? <laughs> boy, oh boy. Xenomorphs, yeah. Love those guys. It always reminds me like I'm playing, um, like I'm using the alien race. Although the icon for them totally reminds me of uh, StarCraft. I don't know how they can get away from it. It totally looks like the Zerg. Let's take a look at that. Where is... Oh, I, I don't have a little icon. I think it's in the research bar, actually. Let's see if I can't research it really quickly, just because I was... Probably physics, right? Ascension perk. I just want to see it again. It doesn't look like... Couldn't have been that far along, was it? Maybe it was engineering. Boy, oh boy. Oh, there you go. If you don't tell me that doesn't look like a combination of, um, you know, uh, some type of Zerg, I don't know. Anyway, we're going to war. And this time we're not taking any prisoners. Let's hope that my... Oh, wow, yeah. Look at this. He wants to cleanse planets, stop atrocities, delete some frontier posts, secede a whole bunch of planets, and the girl of empire wants pretty much to take the entire thing. Wow, this is going to be a fight for survival. Um, because we're in a defensive war, of course I want this. This is a bulwark of harmony. While in a defensive war with another empire, ship build, scree, uh, build speed is increased by 33%. In addition, our fire rate is increased by 15% for ships on our borders. Yeah. Could that have come at a better time? Probably not. So that means we're going to be building ships. We should be building ships at a 33% faster rate because we're in a defensive war. And we should be able to have our fire rate is should be increased. We can't get our fleets. Uh, where's my guys going? Okay, so let's get the two Federation fleets. Get those faster than light warp drives going. Should be in good shape here. What do we got for research? We got some Ripper cannons, not too shabby. Build speeds increased by 50%. That's always good. Start building some more battleships. I think we can spare some energy. So if you're noticing here, if you're playing this game for the very first time, or you're watching this thing, you know, trying to learn a little bit, you'll notice that I've got these curators, and who they are is they're part of the Leviathan DLC pack, and you can trade whatever mineral that, or whatever resource that you have between energy and minerals back and forth at a rate of uh, 1 to 2. So I'm trading a whole bunch of energy for a whole bunch of minerals. It's You probably get a better rate with other um, with other nations, but I just find for for ease and for for speed and I also don't like giving the other races too much of any one thing. Oftentimes at this point in the game no one's really interested in having energy anyway, so everybody's more interested in in getting their hands on minerals just because it's the, the nature of the beast late game. Unless your fleet is out of dock and of course then you're going to need all the, of the energy that you can get. But that being said, if I really wanted to I could have traded with my ally but I really don't want to. 
Okay, it looks like we have grown our roots on Zabenium Prime. Certain individuals have begun to stray from the beaten path. To be expected, but these have supporters. The group feels that the spiritualistic view of the universe is not leading us down fast enough. We've just ascended into the shroud. Bribe their leaders. Yeah, that was easy. What do we got here? Even for a Lotham Xeno, your species is particularly vile, parasite. Wow! That's a lot coming from a deep sea fish face. I'm coming after you there, chief. They always seem to insult me right when I'm in the middle of cleaning up the galaxy's mess. Okay. Let's see what this f awakened empire has to offer. Uh, I wonder... Would this be a good time to access the Shroud? Right before we're into, you know, the thick of a battle? Oh, it looks like... Oh, it looks like by even opening that window... Um... I can't access the Shroud again for quite some time. For 1,380 more days. Well, you look at that. Even when you access the Shroud, it requires... Quite the commitment. Okay, let's get you guys together because you guys are a Federation fleet. And let's see if we can't bait you guys. Get bait the Fallen Empire. What do we got? 42,000. Versus my 144,000. Any day of the week, Chief. Any day of the week. Alright, what do we got here? Wow, he seems committed to it, so why not? Oh, another 43,000. Okay, now this fight just got a little bit more interesting, but it has... Oh, wow. Wow. You know what? I'm going to see what happens. I want to see where we're going to get on this battle. Because we've got all forces engaged. We, we are now facing roughly about 192,000 to my 144, plus the initial fleet. I mean, this is going to be a close battle. We are outgunned by a little bit, but I do believe that we've got some good bonuses. Of course, versus Fallen Empire, we've got our plus 33, so if we can get some long-range attacks on these guys, we should be in good shape. Although the 100... Where's the 100 grand fleet going? Looks like he's heading out of Dodge. This could be huge for us. We've got so many small fighters that this could, this kind of this could totally wage in our favor. This would be the tipping point. I'm kind of curious why he's leaving. What are you doing? I mean, I shouldn't encourage him, but wiping out his entire fleet in one sitting would be pretty. And he's gone, <laughs> and he's gonna let us mop up these these uh, these two fleets. They have no chance. They don't even have cruisers. Cruisers at this point would be really good for protection. They, they've they made destroyers, I guess, but... You can see here, they're mopping up um, my Corvettes pretty... Or, sorry, yeah, my Corvettes are being chopped up pretty good. Probably because there's so many destroyers, but as soon as my cruisers get in there, they're just going to eat them up. So that's it. Wow. So it lost about 20,000, give or take. Um, Mining station? No, I don't want to know that. Oh, I, I must have triggered. There we go. And even my um, my allied fleet only lost what four thousand. All things be considered, this has been really, really good. It's too bad we weren't fighting in in um, in our space though. Okay, what do we got here? The invasion of the Fallen Empire has begun. Now, I want to see what I lost. I lost 90 Corvettes. Oh, my sweet mother of God. I don't even know if it's worth replacing them. One cruiser, 98. They had they built so many destroyers. So, wow, that is... I mean, that's a big loss, but that being said... building that back it won't be that difficult so what I'll do is I'm going to kind of trade in some minerals because we're gonna I want to really I want to mop this guy up complete and just stock right up on our Corvettes there we go
And as it stands right now, I'm not even sweating it because, like I said, we did lose quite a bit of Corvettes. 98 is, is, is pretty remarkable, but that being said, the 100,000 fleet no doesn't even stand a chance now. Who's this guy? Oh, who cares? Okay, we've got our transport fleet. It is now going to... Oh, man, did not expect that. Right on top of our, our army fleet. Oh, and he's got a huge Titan. The only thing that's going to be good about this right now is that he's going to get into the mix of it. Oh, wow, he just completely one-shot us. Oh, my, my unprotected army. That was a lot of psionic army. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would love to think that the AI did that on purpose because I love good, facing good... Um, AI, don't get me wrong. I get the funny feeling that was just me being silly, making a stupid mistake, not protecting my flank, and now we're going to have to dig this in real deep. Okay, so now we have to rebuild an army. In the meantime, I'm trying to think of what I got for a backup. I mean, this 18 and 2, I guess we can launch those two. The Xenomorphs will, will prove to be quite effective. In the meantime, let's see if we can chew these guys up. You can see that right now that's our kinetics coming in hot and heavy. Oh, what do you got there? What do you got? Oh, he's got some destroyers I want to keep out there. It does look like he's got a lot of carriers. Look at those little fighters coming in hot. But unfortunately for him, I've got a lot of point defense with my my destroyers because everybody knows that your point defense is going to def is going to do wonders for you. So we're chewing up pretty good. Destroyer's already gone, so now we're just looking at nothing more than battleships and one Titan. That's what that big diamond is, and that's what that giant beam was. Oh, we are chewing him up. Oh, wow. That's it. I can't believe our war score is only eight. I don't think that he's got any fleet left, quite frankly. I think that's it. But I do have to get my... I have to get my uh, my science ship over there. So what did we lose in that? Uh, well, yeah, so we lost our destroyer. We lost... F oh, that was the... That's our alliance. Who cares about that? Five cruisers, five destroyers, 14 corvettes, and five battleships. Negligible. Completely negligible. And we even took down his titan. Mmm. Man, those are some tasty tastes. So... In recap, everybody, we started off with, what, 144, 142, can't quite remember off the top of my head, and we were able to beat almost 190,000 um, military power awakened empire. So don't let the numbers fool you. It's all about the, having the right build, using a little bit of tactics. I have no idea why his 100,000 ship left. I'm, I'm guessing it's because one of our members, alliance members, decided to jump in, which reminds me, he son of a gun. Okay, everybody. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I don't know how much true this will stay for the rest of the game. But as soon as you decide to use the jump drive, that means you start researching it. Or, sorry, you have completely researched it, which my alliance member has done. It reduces the time that the um, unbidden will show up. And I don't mean by, like, a little bit. By a significant amount. So the poor, the problem really is, yeah, flak battery, I love it. The, the problem is, is that if you don't want the unbidden to show up, guess what? Don't research jump drives. It's really that simple. But what do they do? The AI is like, yup, I'm going to research jump drives. You know, screw it, right? And that's the real problem, is that... Um, And that's how why you end up having the unbidden show up so much more than you would any other uh, crisis. It's because it expedites it so much. Okay, well, that being said, what do we got? The Empire's got, he's got about 2,000 there. I think we've completely crushed this Awakened Empire, which is a bit of a shame because now that I know that the unbidden are probably going to show up, I hope they don't, but it's there's a strong possibility. So what I'm going to do is I am going to... 
probably end this as it stands right now. And uh, we're just going to start mopping up the um, the Awakened Empire. I honestly don't think he's got a fleet that he wouldn't come close to it. And you can see here that my ally has got a fleet of 15,000 and another fleet of 13,000. And it looks like his vassal's coming in hot and heavy. There's there's no real point of, of, of even continuing with this. At this point, system mop-up phase. And by the time you see this again, one or two things are probably going to occur. We're going to access the Shroud again and see what other kind of goodies we can get for our awesome army piece, Psionic Race. Or, we are going to be encountering a Endgame Crisis. I'm hoping that um, whatever it is, it's going to be, you know, it'll, it'll be in our favor, the Army P Republic's favor. Okay, everybody, so this has been Army P for Explorminate.net. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you next time.